What is up, fantasy footballers? Welcome back to Fantasy Friday. This week, we are going over running backs. So, last week we talked about quarterbacks. This week, we're going to talk about running backs that you should target and not target in your upcoming fantasy drafts. Now, I know it's super early. We're still in July, but why not? You know what? I love fantasy football. I can't wait. Been doing it for about eight, nine years now. And, uh, Man, we need something good to happen during this year, huh? 2020 has sucked. So let's talk about something fun, right? Let's get into running back. So <sighs> Christian McCaffrey. If you're the first pick overall and you don't take Christian McCaffrey, you might as well just walk away and let your thing auto-draft for you because it would have picked Christian McCaffrey for you. There's no re- the- I don't even need to go into the reason why you pick him. He, he, it's CMC. You take him, no question. And if you if you're able to take him second pick, you you private message the guy that was in front of you and you thank him for letting you win the league. Anyways, <laughs> so obviously Christian McCaffrey number one overall in running backs. Number two Saquon. He's the only viable option when it comes to the New York Giants. Um, to be taken in the first round in any position. So if the person how you take Christian McCaffrey, there's no reason not to take Saquon. Unless they take Saquon, then you take Christian. But anyways, moving on. Those are pretty self-explanatory. Number three, Zeke. Obviously, I don't like the Cowboys, but you know what? If I'm third pick and Zeke is there, I'm going to take him. Because as much as I despise the Dallas Cowboys, I will still play a Dallas Cowboy character, character. What are, what are we playing? D and D. I will take a player, a Dallas Cowboy player, if it means I win the championship. I'm not above that. <laughs> so yes, he's solid. He produces. Yes, he has that contract of what was it, 90 million? Doesn't matter. He's going to go out there. He's going to run the ball. He's going to plow people. He's going to eat cereal. Yada yada yada. Number four, Derrick Henry, beast. Obviously going to take him first round. Alvin Kamara, no brainer. That's the top five. If you, if you're in the top five positions of the draft, more likely these are going to be one of your picks. If you're in the back half, this is where I would kind of lean back and go, hmm, Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb, Josh Jacobs, and Miles Sanders. They're all solid picks, but I believe that they're solid picks in the second round. I think if you're on the back half of the draft you're going to take double receiver. That's my personal opinion um, because I honestly don't think that any of these five are worth wasting a first-round pick for. Now, a lot of you are going to say, why would you you say waste? Well, I think there's better options in the first round after those first five running backs go. I think the running back position um, is actually the deepest it's been in a couple years. So that's why I'm not too um, keen on taking double running backs early unless i'm in the first five picks and i get like a christian mccaffrey or something like that then on the back half in my second or third round picks i will take a second running back but we'll get into that obviously if you're in ppr or you're and these are based on ppr predictions if you're in a ppr league that has bonus points double qb and or 12 man or more then these guys are good early or good late round first picks depending on how far back or in the middle you are of the draft. So again, a lot of the, the drafting strategies, um, they, they only tell you the ADP. They tell you where they're at based on if you're first. Well, if you're not first, <laughs> you're last. <laughs> Get that reference. Anyways, <laughs> the, the thing is, is there's a, lot, there's a lot of running backs you can take later. Aaron Jones. Now, I get he had a monster year last year. He had 16 touchdowns, rushing touchdowns. All of the running backs who have done rushing touchdowns, 15 or more rushing touchdowns in a season, have never done it back-to-back. So with that, also them picking up A.J. Dillon, I think it's A.J. Dillon, um, and they have Jamal Williams still, they said that they want to do a triple running back committee. I'm sorry, but I'm not, I'm not wasting a first or second round pick on him. If he's their third or fourth round which I highly doubt because I know somebody's going to be boneheaded and take him. And, and I say that because they're, 
when when I say they're boneheaded, they didn't do any research. They probably just like, oh, Aaron Jones, he did good last year. Let me take him. Uh, <laughs> And no fault to them. I mean, obviously they're looking at past stuff, but they're, you got to look forward too. You can't just look at the past. You got to look what's forward too, and what could potentially happen. So I'm going to pass on him unless he's in the third or fourth round pick. Now, if we're in a double quarterback, yada yada, yada you know the other stipulations, I might take him in the 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 late second, early third round. He might jump up just a little bit, but not much. Kenyon Drake, same thing. He's got a potential for top five, but I don't feel like wasting a first or second round pick on him. I believe there's a lot better receivers um, because I feel like the receiver class is, for an elite receiver, is very thin this year. Um, That's my own personal opinion. But um, yeah, Kenyon Drake, um, definitely a third or fourth round picker there. Austin Eckler. Now, I was big on the Eckler wagon last year. I mean, I freaking drafted him really early probably fifth round um which was early compared to what he was going for last year with adp because of melvin gordon this year because melvin gordon's gone eckler is the starter so his adp has like skyrocketed because of that now let me tell you i would only waste maybe a second round pick but late second round early third for him because tyroid tyroid why can't i say his name tyroid taylor is his QB and not Philip Rivers. Now, I know Philip Rivers was on the decline, but look at Tyrod. He was a backup to Josh Allen for a little while. Then he was a backup on, I think it was Cleveland. I could be wrong. Point is, is he hasn't really been playing much. Not to mention, he's not a check down quarterback for his running backs. He's either throw it or run it. Like he's not one of those. So I think Eckler's gonna fall off in production this year, but I still think he's gonna be a solid choice. Another one I'm not big on the hype train is Todd Gurley. Now, a lot of people are into Todd Gurley because he's in Atlanta now and not with the Rams. The Rams treated him badly, yada, 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 NFL politics. I wouldn't take him unless it's late third, early fourth, maybe mid fourth because of Devontae Freeman, Ito, uh, no, not Ito, uh, Brian Hill is there still. I don't think Ito Smith's with them anymore. If he is, then, you know, they got like four running backs. Todd Gurley has injury issues, you know, and I know Devontae Freeman has injury issues, but the thing is, is if they're going to try to split the carries between them and make a one-two punch, I don't think Todd Gurley is going to do that great. Also, Matt Ryan, he's a subpar quarterback. I'm sorry, Atlanta, if you hate me because of that, but I'm just stating the facts. (laughs) Um, Number 15, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Now, his ADP is way too high for somebody who has not even played a game in the NFL. I understand he had a great college run. I understand, but the, the, the college scene is much different than the NFL scene. And not to mention, very few rookie running backs come in and make such a huge impact. Now, over the last couple of years, we've seen a little bit more impact from the rookie running backs than lately. But it's, it's hit or miss with these rookies, no matter what position they're in. Now, am I going to negate the fact that he's a great player? No, he he looks like an absolutely fantastic player. The only problem is I'm not going to waste a first or second round pick to take him. If he's there in the fourth round, yeah, I might try him out. But also look at what team he's on. He's on the, he's on the Kansas City Chiefs. What do the Chiefs have? Oh, my God. They've got Patrick Mahomes. They've got Travis Kelsey. They've got Sammy Watkins, Tyreek Hill, McCole uh, Hardman. Damian Williams. I mean, they've got so many mouths to feed there. I'll be surprised if he has an amazing production. Don't get me wrong. He may explode, but I'm not willing to take that risk. I want somebody more consistent. Now, like I said, if he's there in the fourth round, I'll try it. Ain't going to ain't gonna hurt me there, but I'm not wasting a first through third round pick on him. Chris Carson, he's a steal at third or fourth. I mean, the dude has always been really good. The only problem with him that I'm I'm a little bit leery with is the injuries. He gets injured a lot, but the dude is a good hard hard you know downhill runner. He gets good good carries. It's Seattle. They're pretty heavy on the run. Hopefully this year they've fixed that offensive line a little bit. So now we're gonna get into the tier four because we've kind of done one, two, and three tier four. Leonard Fournette. Now, yes, it's the Jacksonville Jaguars. They've got Gardner Mishu for their quarterback. Their receiving core is a little depleted. Leonard Fournette might get stacked the box on. 
I think if he's there in the fourth round, I think he's a good pick. He's a solid runner. He did really well last year, even with what they had. And he's a big guy. He, he's, you know, Derrick Henry size. Now, is Derrick Henry better? Hell yeah, he is. Is Leonard Fournette great? He is. And I would be more than happy to have him in the fourth round. Um, if he drops to fifth, even better. Getting into these guys, Melvin Gordon, James Conner, Jonathan Taylor for Indianapolis. He was He's a rookie. David Johnson, Mark Ingram, David Montgomery, all solid fourth-rounder, fifth-rounder picks there. Um, Le'Veon Bell, Raheem Moistrat, also solid fourth-round pick, fifth-round picks. Now, after that, I feel like it falls off really heavy. But if you think about it, 25 running backs there that I listed, 25. And if you're a 10-man league, two per, that's, you know, you, you, you get about – two and a half running backs by the time you get down to there here are some notable handcuffs that i or honorable mentions for draft picks here and these guys i wouldn't take until the sixth round or later and the reason being is because these guys are more than likely going to play the backup role or third down role depending on what team they're on so you've got Devonte freeman for atlanta you've got damian williams for kc i think he'll possibly start or take a back seat to uh, Clyde Edwards. You've got Kareem Hunt, which is Nick Chubb's backup in a sense. You've got Marlon Mack, which is Jonathan Taylor. They're going to split carries there. Chris Thompson with Jacksonville. Now, Chris Thompson was with, with Washington, and he was a really good third down back. A lot of carries, good PPR flex. Um, I, I would see him probably do the same there. Uh, Gardner Minshew would probably target him quite a bit. Matt Breda for Miami. Duke Johnson for Houston because you've got um, David Johnson there now from Arizona, went to Houston. And I believe that if DJ keeps getting hurt or keeps having issues with his back and stuff, Duke Johnson will carry a lot of the carries there. So that's a good handcuff. Chase Edmonds for Arizona because Kenyon Drake, if he gets hurt, and also, you know, he, he's a good third down back for your flex spots, especially in deeper leagues, and Carlos Hyde in Seattle because of Chris Carson. There's a plethora of other people that I didn't mention in that notable honorable mention slash handcuff slot because the running back position does get beat up quite a bit. So those are my picks. Those are some of my thoughts on the top 25 and or after. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Next week, we're going to be getting into wide receivers. Now, we're going to go over why I think the wide receiver slot is so deep and what you can do, or not deep, um, sorry, excuse me, running backs deep, as I showed there, because we did 25 plus another about 10, so 35 running backs. So if you take three, boom. Anyways, we're going to get into next week why the wide receiver slot is so diminished and so, like, just they're slim pickings and why you should probably target those higher, especially now that PPR is the standard format. So I look forward to guys, seeing you guys next week, and I hope you guys have an awesome day, and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next week.